and welcome to our studio session, The One with the Girl Speakers, where we're gonna be talking to you about gender bias in the digital age. Before we get going, my name is Megan Sorokman and I'm a senior strategist at Critical Mass London. And I'm Kelsey Chudiak, a strategist at Critical Mass Calgary. For those of you that don't know, Critical Mass is a digital experience design agency with a relentless focus on the customer. And Kelsey and I are lucky enough to get to work with almost a thousand very talented people across 11 different offices. We also get to work with some pretty cool clients. Our focus right now is on Mitsubishi, Infinity, and AT&T. So now that you know a little bit about Critical Mass, let's talk more about why we're both here. This all started last year when Megan and I were speaking at a conference, and so was our male colleague. A really interesting aspect about this conference is the fact that they provide verbatim feedback to the presenters. And so we decided to analyze the sentiment behind this feedback that we were given. And that's because this conference started off a little weird for us. So right before we were about to present, I decided to quickly run to the bathroom. And I get a text from Megan saying, direct quote from someone who just walked in. This is the one with the girl speakers. Right away, our gender became our identifier. And we noticed this was prevalent in our positive feedback as well. People felt the need to call out our gender. So the ladies really knew what they were talking about, or the ladies did a great job. And so we wanted to look at the negative feedback as well. And we got comments like this. I was overly polished and seemed unapproachable. I wasn't a personal speaker and didn't keep the presentation light and fun. I was a little flat and bogged down in spreadsheets, which is a total lie because Kelsey and I joked about how much we hate spreadsheets in that presentation. And so with that negative feedback, we decided to look at our male counterparts negative feedback as well. And he got comments like, interesting, but nothing mind blowing. Interesting to hear, but irrelevant to me from a business perspective and just needs a little practical application. Right away, we noticed that there was a very stark contrast between the type of feedback that he was getting and the type of feedback that we were getting. His was all about the content versus ours was all about us as people. So from here, we started to do some research to see if anybody else had experienced this. And it turns out it's a thing. Women are actually 1.4 times more likely to receive critical subjective feedback compared to critical objective feedback. And I'm sure you can guess which type of feedback is better to get. And when we looked at this in more detail, we found out that 76% of women get negative personality feedback in reviews, compared to only 2% of men receive that same negative personality feedback. That's a pretty stark contrast in the types of feedback that we're receiving. When we dug even deeper into these numbers, we found that it only gets worse for women of color where four times as many women of color compared to white men need to provide evidence of their confidence in reviews, which is just ridiculous. And so this is a huge issue, especially within our industry, because we're so reliant on feedback and it's a subjective industry. So we need that feedback to push our work further as well as our careers. And without that constructive feedback, our work suffers and we're not able to climb that corporate ladder the same way as our male counterparts. So an example of how this type of bad feedback manifests itself in our professional lives is called the broken rung problem. So we all know that women are actually less likely to be promoted than men. That's common knowledge. But the biggest gender disparity in promotions actually comes really early on in our careers, where an entry level workers are actually trying to make the jump to managerial positions. Researchers at McKinsey actually discovered that while women make up about 48% of entry-level positions, only 39% progress to managerial ones. And so what that means is that for every 100 women that get promoted, 130 men get promoted to manager. 
And for women of color, as you can imagine, that gap becomes even wider. The gender difference is so great that researchers claim that this broken rung at the very first step up to manager is actually the biggest obstacle that we face on the path to leadership. And so it became really clear to us that we all still have an inherent bias. And so this inspired us to put together a project. And I'm gonna show you something that Megan and I have been working on. Gender bias in the workplace. It's a thing. Men get feedback about the content they present. Women get feedback about themselves. To shed some light on the issue, we turn to deepfake technology. So I want you to read this one first. Want I to read what he said? Yeah, that's what he oh, said. <laughs> Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Welcome to our brand new webinar series, Digital Deep Dives in Five, where we're gonna be looking at trends that are happening in the digital Same space. talk, same so presenters. Different genders. ...is impacting customer experience and what brands and marketers need to know. To get the transformation right, we brought in an expert. We discovered pretty quickly we had a lot to learn. Less movement. More angles. More emotion. Less man buns. Got it. We made these adjustments, but found a new obstacle to overcome. Our voices. Our audio engineer did a deep dive and identified what really makes a voice sound male or female. Hi everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Welcome, Welcome to, to our, our brand new, new webinar, webinar series, series Digital, Digital Deep Dives in But even after applying these changes and more, the technology still wasn't meeting our expectations. Thanks to a bunch of trial and some error too, we realize there's still a lot for us to learn. But what it comes down to is that as a digital agency, we have two jobs. One is to push our technology forward and make it better. The other is to push ourselves to be better. So as you can see, unconscious bias is systematically ingrained in all of us. And even though our project didn't work out exactly how we wanted it to because of the limitations of the technology we were working with at the time, we still wanted to share our experience with you. Because when people know better, they do better. And when they're aware of the unconscious bias that they have or those around them, then they can bring awareness to the issue and create change. So we hear all the time how companies are trying to be better. Harvard estimates that about 42% of companies actually check for gender bias in reviews. But when they looked at companies that actually track the outcomes of bias for both gender and color, which is really where the actual change happens, you can see that number drops down to about 18%. So if self-awareness and commitment to change are what's key to turning unconscious bias to conscious bias, what can we as individuals and also as corporations do? We have three key tips here. The first is to check yourself. The second is to, the first is check yourself, then test yourself, and finally track yourself. Starting with check yourself, the very, very first step is really just taking the time to understand that you're probably not completely unbiased. Harvard has this really handy implicit bias test that you can take online that allows people to actually self-assess how subtly biased or maybe not so subtly biased they are across 15 key areas because gender isn't the only problem. And as I'm sure you notice, Megan and I have focused primarily on talking about gender and race, but this test goes far beyond that. It looks at age, it looks at LGBTQIA plus and people with disabilities. So when you take this test, you can identify exactly where your bias lies. And again, when you know better, you can do better. The next area that you need to focus on is to test yourself. And a great way to do this is to flip it to test it. We've noticed that there is a very stark contrast between the type of feedback men are given and women are given. So look at the type of feedback that you're giving people and see if you would give that same feedback to a male counterpart or someone from a different affinity group. And that's a great way to assess if there's bias within the statement or feedback that you're giving someone. So let's look at some examples. 
In feedback and performance reviews, women often receive negative feedback for the same behavior that a man would be praised for. So women might be labeled as arrogant in a review where a man would be praised as confident. Men might be looked at as thoughtful, whereas a woman would be called indecisive for that same behavior. And finally, the most loaded word in a performance review, emotional. Women will be negatively labeled as emotional, where men will be labeled as passionate for that same behavior. And these words and feedback change even for women of color again, where a white woman might be labeled emotional, other groups might be labeled irrational or even angry compared to their male counterparts. And so you can see how absolutely polarizing these terms can be. And it's really no surprise that the broken rung for women stepping up from entry level to managerial positions would be that much harder. We need to make sure, like Kelsey mentioned, that we're flipping it to test it. You need to think to yourself, would I ever call a man emotional? If not, then you probably shouldn't be giving that feedback to a woman. Getting into the last one, track yourself. This is probably the most important step for organizations to take because awareness without action doesn't equal change. We need to be tracking our progress with real data against set targets to ensure women and women of color are being treated equally to their male counterparts in reviews and in feedback. And so what type of data or where should we be looking um, to make sure that we're tracking and measuring this? There's four main areas that we need to look at. The first being performance reviews. We need to be making sure that there aren't biased feedback or comments being given to employees. So if we track that and assess if there is bias within those statements, we can identify a problem. And there's a lot of tools out there for organizations to help identify if there is bias in feedback that's being given. The next is the rate at which certain groups are hired. Are certain affinity groups not hired as prevalently in your organization as say, your male counterparts. And so if you identify that there's an issue in this area, then you can make sure you're adjusting your HR hiring practices to account for this and making sure that you adjust that issue. The next is the velocity at which they're promoted. And this relates back to that broken rung theory that Megan was talking about earlier. Are you see me seeing the same velocity of promotion in females versus males and are there discrepancies within that data that you're seeing so that you can identify if there's areas you need to work on or certain levels of the organization that need to be approved upon and finally you need to hold leaders accountable for progress on these diversity metrics if they're not being held accountable for their actions or even measuring these diversity metrics in the first place then how are we going to elicit change and we've noticed that throughout our research one way to potentially do this is to monetize it. And so in summary, really as a digital design agency, we have two main jobs. One is to push technology forward and make it better, just like Megan and I tried to do with deep fake technology. And the other is push ourselves to be better. Because again, when you know better, you do better. So thank you so much from the girl speakers. And just before we let you go, we just wanted to thank the team at Critical Mass that we work with. Um, obviously, we couldn't do this project alone, so we just wanted to thank everyone who took part in it.